We're in Austin, Texas to drive the all-new 2013 Dodge Dart. It may be based on the European Alfa Romeo Giulietta, but it's not just a skin job. This car is both longer and wider. The car we're driving today is painted Redline Red, sports twin exhausts, and has the optional 17-inch Hyper Black alloy wheels. Not a bad looking car. Starting with the Rally Looks package, this particular Dart has been optioned up to 23,000. The good news is, for this price, you get Fiat's 1.4 liter multi-air turbo under the hood. It puts out 160 horsepower and 184 foot-pounds of torque. Combined with the slippery .285 drag coefficient, it scores an EPA rating of 39 miles to the gallon highway, 27 city. A lot of thought went into efficiency with this new car. The Dart's the first Dodge to use what they call the active grille shutter system. What it is is a series of electronically controlled louvers that close to improve aerodynamic flow. But the engine's electronically monitored, so if it needs to be cooled, they'll open back up and cool your engine. For the Dart, Dodge surveyed university students to find out what they wanted in a car. The answer was technology and customization. Though ours came with straightforward diesel gray and black fabrics, Dodge offers 14 different interior colors and trims to pick from, three different transmissions, three engines, two gauge clusters, and either a base radio or an 8.4 inch touchscreen with or without navigation, satellite radio, and so forth. You can even add storage under the passenger seat. It's big enough to fit a camera or purse with ease. Dash is based around a floating islands concept. The optional touchscreen is fully integrated, but aircon controls are still provided on a handy island of their own. If you opt for navigation, it's about a $500 upgrade. For this, you get Garmin's excellent software and it looks really great on the large display. Once on the road, it's immediately clear. This engine, so brilliant in the Fiat 500 Abarth, isn't a good fit for the much larger Dart. Turbo lag is horrendous. Before it spools around 4,000 RPM, you're driving Miss Daisy. This engine is about economy, not performance. Keep that in mind, and we'll be okay. The road manners are quite good, the Dart provides a confident and capable ride, well suited to big American highways. The electronic steering is variable in this. If you're driving around the city, it's looser and uh, gives you a little more assist. When you're driving at velocity, it's stiffer. And honestly, the connection to the road through the steering wheel feels pretty good. But that's just part of the driving equation. The brake pedal is really high, and that makes it difficult to do heel to toe, if you're into that sort of thing. An unlikely concern for the average buyer, but it's hard not to think of performance and turbo in the same sentence. This car is a six-speed manual, but honestly, you'd be fine with the four-speed. I think that five and six are just there for the EPA. And it's not just Dodge. It seems these days everyone's sacrificing fun at the altar of economy, which kind of kills the whole idea of a stick shift. The throw is long and, and honestly it's a little bit spongy to engage. Later this year this car will also be available with the dual clutch transmission, but that's in the turbo. The other engines, well, they'll be getting the traditional six-speed automatic transmission option. If you're into economy, look for a Dart Aero later this year with the claimed 41 miles per gallon freeway. More performance oriented, wait for the Dart RT. That'll be out in the fall it has a new 2.4 liter engine that bumps the horsepower to 184. But more importantly, it will eliminate the turbo lag that saps all the fun from this otherwise very solid compact car offering.
statements, I think, are very modern versions of what you know, people remember about the chart. The, uh, the 06 concept. Mm -hmm.